Hello, I'm Anthony. Today I'm going to demonstrate a feature called Follow Transport in Groove Agent. It's this little light here. It basically allows Groove Agent to sync with Cubase, play its groove in the background without you explicitly having to import uh, any drum information into your project, and it allows you to audition music really quickly. What I'm going to do today, hopefully, is build a groove over the top of this guitar line. I've dragged this in from Media Bay. Uh, it's called the Problematic Guitar Line. You should have access to it. It's part of the VST Sound library. But anyway, the bottom line is that we've got this really simple guitar part, a couple of verses, a couple of fills, a couple of chorus parts, and then a bridge at the end. I'm going to try to dynamically create um, a drum rhythm underneath this thing as quickly as possible using Follow Transport. So here we are with a completely empty groove agent. You can see that I've created a MIDI track underneath. We'll get to that later. And I'm going to load a kit, not with patterns, just a kit all on its own. I've picked the simplest possible kit I can, the Acoustic Agent SE Studio Kit, and I'm going to load the init profile. So this is the stock Groove Agent live drum kit. You can't get any simpler than this. Have a look at the instruments. Got it set nice and quiet so that it doesn't interfere with us, me talking over the top of it. What I'm now going to do is load a style into this kit. So on my styles tab on the browser, if you open this, if you press this little styles button, you'll see all your styles available. Just having a browse through some of the styles and I've selected this country 01 style. I can just double click it. And that's loaded it onto a single pattern pad. So what we've got here is basically a collection of grooves. You've got 16 main grooves, eight fills, four intros and four endings. So 32 different patterns all in that have a familial feel to them. All of these grooves are gonna fit well together. it can be really easy to build a groove uh, using this single style. You can load multiple styles onto multiple different pads. That's not where we're going today. I wanna to try and keep it as simple as possible. So before we go any further, let's have a listen to this style. I want you to hear the main groove, so I'll switch it to main. I'll bring the complexity all the way down to one. So this is the simplest thing that this groove can possibly do. And it sounds like this. Okay, so we've got this nice, simple groove. As I increase the complexity, it's gonna get increasingly, guess what, complex. Now we're here to demonstrate follow transport today, so I wanna get that up and running as quickly as possible. Turn the light on. What this means is that Groove Agent is now synced to Cubase. I don't have to press play inside Groove Agent. I can press play in Cubase and it'll play the groove. And you'll also hear the guitar line. Now this groove is synced to the positional location of the song. Can you see here I've got the song marker, it's just gone past bar eight. If I press play right now, this groove is gonna to jump to nearly complete. It'll jump three bars of the way through its four bar groove and it'll finish off playing such that the beginning of the groove happens at the beginning of bar nine. This is the beauty of follow transport, it's linked to the transport bar. So I'll just do that now, I'll just press play, watch this little timer, it'll jump to about nine o'clock. And then it catches up and carries on playing the beginning of the groove. So whatever I do, wherever I jump in the song, it's always gonna be synced, it's always gonna be playing the correct rhythm for that moment in time. This means your song needs to be at one of these rhythmically important locations. You can see my song, for instance, starts at bar five, because I know that this is a four bar based groove. Stands to reason, if you load a style in that's got eight bar grooves in it, move your song to start at bar nine, it's, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Now this is the point in the process where you need to do a little bit of legwork. As I say, I've got a couple of verses and these two sections here are both fills. Uh, these are chorus sections and then a bridge at the end. You're going to need to audition this stuff. You know, you can't just do it by magic. So if I get the thing running in the background, I'm gonna turn it down really quietly so that I can talk quite comfortably over the top. But I'm now gonna start stepping through the various complexity layers. Here's the section where I'd want to be playing my fills. So I might, for instance, select those and just cycle around the fills and then audition how each of the fills sounds. So let's have a listen to fill one. So now that having selected fill one, it's just gonna play exactly fill one, every single bar. 
and I can audition each of them in turn. Now I've already done this, I've got some notes down in front of me so that I can skip a lot of this. It's not tedious, it's quite good fun actually, but it takes maybe 10 minutes to go through each one of the 32 bar, uh, 32 patterns, listening to each of them, trying to figure out where you want your fills to go, uh, how complex you want the pattern to get. So for instance, when we get to the chorus over here, if we head back to our main groove and complexity one, so this is as simple as it can be. When I came to the chorus, I felt I wanted a little bit more energy. So having auditioned all the various drum lines, I discovered that complexity nine has quite a nice ride. And then when we move on to the second part of the chorus, I can just step up that complexity a little bit to bring in that bell. And then we're gonna need some kind of fill to bring us into the bridge. So as I'm listening to the song, you know, every song is gonna be different. I don't wanna to spend too long on the, on the specifics of this particular piece. But the point is that I'm listening to each one of these parts. I'm cycling through each one of the, each one of the 16 complexities of the main grid, and then individually auditing, uh, auditioning all the fills, all the endings, and, and then make my notes, and I know what's gonna sound good, what's my kind of palette of things to work with. So I'm gonna slow things down a little bit now and actually do some of this stuff in real time rather than just talking about it in theory. So at the moment, this uh, groove exists only on one pad. I'm gonna set it back to complexity one main and I'm gonna rename this pad this and I'm gonna give it a color. You really don't have to do this. I just like to keep things nice and clean so that my brain knows what's going on. I, I tend to get confused if things aren't labeled properly. Now that I've created this pad, having done my auditioning, I want eight of the 16 different complexities to be able to toggle through as I'm listening to them. So if I press the Alt key down on my keyboard, I can sim simply drag this pad along. I could have multi-selected four pads then and done a mass copy, but you know, come on, it's a few seconds. So now I've got eight different pads. Each one of these contains the complexity number one groove. Out of, this, uh, out of this style, the Country 01 style. So from my auditioning, I decided that I wanted complexity two, three, four. And now having manually set these, you can see me selecting the pad and then setting the complexity. That pad is now locked to that complexity. So when I start the song playing, as I choose each one of these pads, it's gonna jump straight to that part. Complexity six is a cool one. I'll just show you that quickly. So because this is the currently selected pad, this is what's gonna get played in the background when I press play in the song. It's got a nice little pre-fill. Let's listen to it. There. So it's just a nice little step in the rhythm to give it a little bit more animation. So I'm kind of making a mental note of this stuff. In addition to my written notes, um, I do kind of remember within a fairly small um, remit, 16 pads is enough. I'm going to be able to remember this live and be able to effectively do a performance out of it. Then we've got the eight fills to play with. Well, having auditioned them all, there were four that I was interested in hearing. So what I'm going to do is drag, this is alt click, drag the pad up. Now I'm going to rename this fill. So I've not called it fill one, not being that specific, because I want to be able to overwrite these pads if I change my mind. And I'll give it a different color, make it nice and obvious what's going on. Before I copy this fill anywhere else, I'm actually gonna create four different fills. I want to set it to a fill so that I've got less work to do later. And I've chosen the last four fills, apparently. Five, six, seven, and eight. So there's five set up. Now I can Alt, click, drag, drag, and set these to five, six, seven, and eight. Let's have a quick listen to that. Get the fills up and running. So we're gonna start on fill eight here. It's really easy for me to audition each of them in place 
decide which fill I like where. Don't ignore the endings and intros as well. Very often they have really interesting bits of the groove. It might be bars two and three of an ending that you think, oh, I like that. I'll be able to drag those two bars out and use that as a fill somewhere. So in my prep, I decided that endings one and three were quite good. I'm ha I have to drag the pad up because it's the pad that contains the style information. You either drag it from the browser or drag it from a pad. They both do the same thing. This is going to be an ending. And just for kicks, different color. Now this is going to be, let's say ending, what did I say, one and three. Copy that across and make the second one ending three. You can see I'm doing this very quickly, but it's pretty obvious that it's really easy, really intuitive to get this stuff built. And then I need a couple of intros. So this is going to be an intro. Oops. And one final color. And I wanted intros one and two. So my 10 minute auditioning process gave me these 16 candidates of the 32 different grooves that I've got available to me in this style palette. I threw 16 of them away, wasn't bothered. That's not a destructive process. I could go back tomorrow and decide I didn't like this groove and, and re-audition it and choose a, a different main pattern that I'd previously ignored. But I very rarely go past 16 because my brain simply can't handle jumping across multiple different pattern groups loading every single groove onto every pad. You're not going to like everything. So I'm just being really brutal, throwing half of the stuff away. And these are the candidate grooves with which I'm going to play. So now I can get the song going. I can select verse number one. So let's see if I can remember. I think it's one, two, three, four, six, nine, ten, thirteen, 10, uh, 13, fills, five, six, seven, eight, endings, one, three, intro, one, two. Really pretty straightforward to remember. When I come back in an hour's time, I'll have forgotten that, but right now I know it. So let's get up and running with auditioning how all of these grooves are going to fit underneath the song. So I've switched to six. It's got that nice little pre-fill hop. A couple of fills. And then my ride demo fail. Didn't configure the comp complexity for these three pads. I'd left them all at one. So I'll just go back in and fix them. And then we'll be able to jump back. Not the end of the world. So let's go back to this fill. This was on, let's say that one. That's better. There's the ride I was expecting. Now this um, bell, I'm going to introduce halfway through the bar. Mm, so do I, do I want that insistent beat to come in a little bit sooner? Let's try that again. Try it all the way through the four bars. Yeah, I think I do. And then I'm going to want to fill right at the end of the song. And then back to complexity one. Obviously, this is the point where we could spend half an hour fine tuning that stuff. But let's say I'm happy with that audition, that dress rehearsal. Now what I need to do is drag each of these pads. I'm going to put them on a MIDI track, so I'll leave the Groove Agent track completely alone. And then I'll drag each of these patterns. It's sufficiently recent for me to remember exactly what I did. If you struggle to remember, you know, this much information, just do it in smaller sections. It's really pretty straightforward. Now here's where things got a little bit more convoluted because I want complexity 10 for the last half of this section. So I'm going to delete half of it. Drag one of these up into the project, but I only want the second half. So throw the first half away, making sure it's not hidden behind my head. Bring that in. 
Then is the insistent snare thing going on. Don't want the last bar because I'm going to need a fill. Drag my fill in. Now I don't need follow transport anymore. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to audition this MIDI part. Now, might be a couple of fills short of happy there. I was listening to the core of a section, thought this dragged on a little bit, would probably put a fill in there, but that's just fine tuning. At this point, we're up and running. You've got a fully fledged groove that it took me what, 10, 15 minutes to create. Hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful. Please hit like if you did. Thanks very much for watching.